fit right here so he can, doesn't have that in the shot. What's the matter with that? Because we're trying to pretend that we're like out in the woods and not on some first golf course. tell me what you know, to do, asshole. I won't, I won't. <laughs> I'm not telling you what to do. Yes, sir, sounds to me like he's telling me what to do, doesn't it? Okay, here we are. We, uh, what, spent the last week fishing? Last week fishing different rivers in uh, Wisconsin and everything from a very small, uh, called a river here, but it could be, I think, more properly called a creek. It was only running 29 CFS all the way up to uh, the Menominee River on the border of Michigan and Wisconsin, which is, I don't know, probably a couple grand at least yeah. from cubic feet. Came out here to test our lines, would, uh, our finish lines would apply, you know, in situations, a wide variety of situations for warm water fishing. Uh, and a lot of, most of it was using very light rods, single-handed rods, which we had converted over double-handed. Handed. The reason being that uh, a lot of the streams here in the Midwest are not giant sized streams like a lot of salmon and steelhead streams. You're not talking, you know, 100, 200, 300 foot wide rivers. We're talking 20, 30, 40, 50 foot wide rivers where by the time you use your wading skills, you've waded to within a position where it would only take a cast of 60 feet or less. And in those situations, your normal Obviously, your, your spay rods of a 12 feet or longer are just uh, completely cumbersome. And then uh, switch rods of, you know, 10 and a half to 11 and a half feet are better, but still not the perfect tool, especially if you're doing strip types of retrieves. They, they, that, even at that length, they feel especially cumbersome when you're doing a strip type retrieve. So the single-handed rods from We've got them all the way down from six, six foot six inches long all the way up to ten and a half feet, cover that whole uh, spectrum of fishing real nicely, very nicely. It's, it's a lot of fun, feels, uh, feels right, feels yeah. comfortable when you're fishing a nine foot rod and making 60 foot casts, 60, 65 foot casts and stripping it. A lot of these places, you know, we might be fishing a stream that's only 40, 50 feet wide, and the, therefore the population of predator, bass or pike, you're talking six, eight, 10 inch bass. A 10 inch bass would be a trophy or a 15, 16 inch pike and an 18, 19, 20 inch pike would be a trophy. They're small fish, don't exactly bend a whole lot of, uh, if you're using a seven, eight weight rod, you don't really get a whole lot of fun out of them. If you use a four or five weight, you get a blast out of them. But then the trick is, even though these fish are little predators, they're warm water predators and they want meat. You know, these are not trout. They're not eating the size 16 dry fly. They want a three, three and a half, four inch streamer or two and a half inch weighted crawdad fly. So this is part of the reason the OPST line was, was uh, innovated was to cover that type of a situation. And well, well, we found they worked very, very well. We fished a lot with, uh, you know, literal four weight single handers and five weight single handers in single-handed mode and in double-handed mode. And with the OPST line and an appropriate tip, everything went just, just totally smooth as butter. Yeah. Worked out actually better than expected. These lines are actually doing a lot more than we thought they would. It was an absolute pleasure fishing an appropriate weight and length rod for the appropriate size river in quarry. You know, it was. It was really, really fun. It's, it's simple. It feels very comfortable. Sweet. If you'd like to cast and strip for streamers, this is the way to go. Yeah, and this is exactly <laughs> what we wanted to develop over the last few years. You know, we didn't develop this to go to market and sell it to people. We developed this out for ourselves. We needed a line that would fit our rods, would cover as many fishing situations as possible. Look at that! Woo! That beauty, oh man, nice. For the most part, with the OPST line matched to an appropriate rod and probably one other line, you could probably fish just about, you probably covered 95, maybe more percent of a fly fishing situations with that. For instance, if for a trout fisherman, one real nice floating line for dry fly fishing and then the OPST line to cover your streamer fishing and everything else. Uh, for the situation I'm in now, now that I'm, you know, living in Wisconsin, I don't even need a floating line because for bass and pike and stuff, I just put a floating tip on my OPST commando head and I'm good to go for everything from poppers to dry flies to streamers to bobber fishing. 
whatever. So, uh, yeah, I'm more than pleased with the, with the way these lines turned out. And these rivers were, they were all bank to bank. Foliage. Foliage. Yeah. Bank to bank foliage, lots of big boulders, and with the little single handed rods, you weren't even aware of the back casting yeah. room required because there really wasn't any back casting room required, you know, and you could still fish the whole ditch no matter how big they were. They were, it was really effective and super fun. Yeah, most of these, uh, at least the ones I've seen here in Wisconsin, there is, it's not like out west, there is no such thing as a bar. The yeah. river, no matter the height, whether it's high or low, it's got trees on the river, river left and it's got trees on the river right. Yeah. And usually the banks are not like this, they drop right in. It's pretty hemmed in casting in a lot of these places. So if you don't have a way to fish with minimal D loop room, you are missing out on a good 50% of the water that, uh, that can be covered you know, with fly, fly rod. So once again, I know I'm repeating myself, but this line didn't just meet our expectations that exceeded our expectations. Absolutely. So. I mean, yesterday we were throwing indicators, yeah. those homemade indicators, little you know, tube little bobbers. Tiny and, 20 foot wide, yeah. maybe 20 to 30 foot wide screen. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, got my well, first two carp ever on the fly, which was really cool, and that little tiny stream. Yeah. Watched them gobble up my That's stuff. That's the kind of stream that everybody has. I mean, literally, this is 20, 30 feet wide. Looks like a uh, I can tell you this, anybody from West Coast would look at this stream and go, I'm not fishing that, not even get, not even going to touch the water in it because it's all brown and kind of, you know, yeah. nasty looking. And there's bass in there and there's carp in there. It's the type of stream that most people, you know, uh, most people have one of these, mate, if not flowing through your backyard, literally down the street someplace. Absolutely. So, and we all know everybody has single-handed rods in yeah. their closets, yeah. you know, and those single-handed rods. You know, the, the, the old style of loading up a 30-foot head to get it going, you don't need to do that anymore. A little sea spay and away you go. One simple false cast, sea spay, and out it goes. It was a really, really pleasant way of fishing, and it was and very effective. It was like super that. effective. You get in a 20, 30-foot wide stream, and you can't overhead cast. You don't have the room. We're using a, a little 7-foot 4, 5 weight in there, and you just don't have the room to lift that thing up because you've got tree branches right here. Yeah. So what do you, the only way to cast is literally a, a water anchored spay type of cast. That was it. It's the only casting you're going to get. And you wouldn't be able to turn over the stuff we were fishing if you were trying to roll it with the standard, standard fly, line fly line. would not have cut it. Not with the stuff. We needed that bobber to help us tell when the fish ate the flies and then we needed to cast a fairly good sized streamer or a weighted bugger imitation in behind that. And you're talking distances, like I said, 20, 25, 30 feet max. And, uh, but yet, if that stream were to open up to 100 feet with that same line, we could hit 65, 70, and with smaller flies, even 75 feet cast. People ask why, uh, why this line on little single-handed rods? And the main reason would be uh, the reason that spade casting was invented for, for in the first place, which is to be able to cast in places with uh, limited room. This particular line, because it's so short and it packs so many grains in such a short package, therefore it has the ability to turn over stuff that most people would consider outside the window of applicability for that particular rod with a standard fly line. With our fly line, it's going to increase the, the or widen the window of uh, what you can cast on that rod, whether it be flies or sink tips or whatever. A lot of fun. Can't this wait till next place. year. Yeah, yep, no do idea. it again. I'll tell you what, almost every stream here has got a population of bass and pike in it. So. Yeah, it was pretty amazing how small some of the stuff we fished is and how effective we were in it. Yeah, yeah it was really, really cool. Really fun, period. And then the only other thing I add to this is if you ever decide to get a dog, rescue a dog. Yeah. This guy. <laughs> Best things happened to me. That's awesome. Yeah, Kobe. <clears throat> How's that? So what do we got there, Ed? Giant spider. <laughs> this guy says that they're extremely toxic and aggressive. <laughs> so and it, they'll jump on your face and do that alien thing. You know, <laughs> stick a big tube down your mouth and plant eggs in it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's poke it with a stick and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, so now we're going to poke it with a stick and see what happens. <laughs> We're gonna put it, hook it with a stick and then put it in Dave's shirt. <laughs> he can jump at least that far. He's probably gonna go for your face. Ah!